What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another episode of PS3 Tutorials. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to go from CEX to DEX on your jailbroken PS3 or KEX to DEX. So if you already know what that is then just go ahead and skip to the, the beginning of the tutorial. I'll put a link in the bottom of the screen to a timestamp, you can just skip to the start. But for people who are unfamiliar let me just try and briefly explain it here. So basically you are currently on KEX if you've been following my tutorial since episode 1. All the videos we've done up till this point have been on KEX and that just relates to the kernel type of your PS3. So it's a retail kernel type. KEX, CEX is just a retail kernel type. Um, most PS3s are on KEX. However, you can convert to a DEX kernel type, which is basically a, a development kit or debug kernel type, which essentially gives you more options on the PS3. A lot of it's kind of stuff in the back end that you're not really going to notice, but in terms of stuff that's actually useful to, to you, um, things like being able to connect RTE tools uh, easily, you can do with um, a DEX custom firmware, you can connect RTE tools, so tools on your computer that remotely connect to the PS3, so you can adjust settings or mod games remotely, um, so you have the ability to do that. You can kind of do that on KEX as well with various plugins and stuff, but generally it's easier um, to do it on DEX. And it'll also make it easier when it comes to installing Linux, which we're going to be covering in the next episode. Um, so it'll be easier to install Linux on a DEX um, PS3 than a KEX PS3. But you can switch back and forth between the two. Um, so yeah, and you can still connect to PSN as well on a DEX kernel type. So let's get into this. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure that you download Rebug Rex, the latest version of Rebug Rex. Now right now from when I'm recording, that's still on 4.84. They haven't updated it to 4.85 yet. So you'll need to um, downgrade if you've already updated to a higher custom firmware, a 4.85 custom firmware, then as of right now, you'll have to downgrade to um, the 4.84 version of Rebug Rex. I have a tutorial covering how to downgrade your firmware version. It's the previous episode, so I'll link it in the description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. So you can go ahead and uh, downgrade if you need to downgrade. If you're on a different custom firmware that's on the same version, then you can just update to it. Or if you're watching this in the future and there's a 4.85 version of uh, Rebug Rex released, then you can just go ahead and download and install it. So if we click it here, you cannot use Rebug Lite for this, you should be using um, Rebug Rex. So if we go down to the bottom, this is where the downloads are, so uh, 4.84 Rex edition, you can download that. Um, and then you also want to download the DREX edition, which is of course the DEX version of the custom firmware. So you're going to download both. When you do that, you'll get two zip files. Inside the zip files are the download links for the PUP files, which are the actual uh, firmware. So you're going to copy those links into your browser and download the PUP files so that you have the custom firmware downloaded. So then we're going to put that on a USB stick. Make sure the USB stick is formatted in FAT32 format. Again, if it's not, you can right click and format it and select FAT32 as the file system. If you can't select FAT32, then use an external program like Aomi Partition Assistant or some other third party tool to format it in FAT32 format. So. What you want to do is create a new folder called PS3 in uppercase. Inside that folder, you're going to create another folder called update also in uppercase. And then in that folder, you're going to copy uh, the 4.84 uh, Rebug Rex or the latest version of Rebug Rex uh, into that folder, making sure it's the KEX version, not the DREX version, the DEX version. You want the, the CEX version, the normal version of Rebug Rex right now. Okay, and then what you wanna do is just uh, rename it. You can check the hash as well if you wanna make sure that the, the download isn't corrupted because if it's corrupted and you install it, it could break your system. Just go to a site like onlinemd5.com and drag the pup file from the USB in there. And then that will calculate the hash. And then the hash is also in the name here. So copy the hash from here and paste it underneath. And if you get the tick, then you're good, it means it's the same, so it's not corrupted. Normally I don't do that myself, but you know, if you wanna be extra sure, extra careful, then you can take that extra precaution. So what we're gonna do is rename it, so it's just called ps3updat.pup, and from there you can unplug your USB and plug it into your PS3. 
And on the PS3, you're going to go to System Update, Update via Storage Media, and do the update right here for uh, 4.84 Rebug Rex. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to go through the process, but you would just, you know, go through it, click OK, and start installing the update. If you have any problems updating, then do it in safe mode instead. So boot into safe mode and then choose option six and then go through that process. Um, if you're already on Rebug Rex, then of course you don't need to do that. So, and of course, if you're on a higher custom firmware and you're trying to downgrade, check my previous video on how to downgrade to um, 4.84 Rebug Rex from a 4.85 custom firmware. Okay, and then fine. And then the next thing we want to do just to be sure is also make sure that you've disabled any custom spoofing that's going on as well. So if you're on a 4.84 custom firmware like Rebug Rex and you're spoofing your firmware to 4.85, you want to disable that before you switch over to DEX. So I'm just going to run Sen Enabler. If you have this, then make sure you disable it. And then in here, you just go to Sen slash PSN options and then restore the default spoof. Say yes. And that should put it back to 4.84. You just want to do this before converting to DEX, otherwise it can interfere with things. And then it goes, it's restored. And then if you want to reboot, then just say yes and it will reboot. Okay, so now that we're back, I can just check real quick. System settings, system information. And as you can see, I'm back to 4.84. So the spoofing is disabled. So that's just important if you were spoofing your custom firmware to a higher version, just to turn it off. Obviously, if you don't have Sen Enabler, then you won't be spoofing to a higher custom firmware, so you're fine. But we want to make sure that you disable that before we start converting over to DEX. So let's do that now. So what you want to do now is run the Rebug Toolbox. Now, if you've just installed the Rebug Rex custom firmware, then you might have a, a different version of Rebug Toolbox uh, installed compared to the one that comes with the custom firmware. So to be sure, you want to go ahead and delete uh, Rebug Toolbox and then just reinstall it from uh, the package manager. So go to package manager, install package files, PS3 system storage, and select Rebug Toolbox, and that'll install the correct version of Rebug Toolbox for the uh, Rebug Rex firmware that you have installed. So then we're going to run Rebug Toolbox, Okay, so before we get started, make sure you're not signed into PSN. You can still be connected to the internet when you do this. Just don't be signed into a PSN account right now. And also make sure there's no disks in your PS3 disk tray. Okay, so once you're on Rebug Toolbox, if you head to System Information here, you can see it says LV2 kernel is KEX and target type is also KEX. So then head over to the selector. Make sure System Mode is set to Normal, not Rebug right now and that debug menu type is set to uh, Kex QA, which it should be if you've not changed it before. And then head over to Utilities and go to Toggle QA Flag. Make sure that's enabled. Mine still is from uh, the previous video. And then scroll down to Dump EID Root Key. So you want to select that option and say yes to dump the key. So from there, what you want to do is just run the Rebug Toolbox again. So go back into Game and launch your rebug toolbox okay so once you're back into the rebug toolbox you're going to head into dex slash kex and select the rewrite target id in flash when you select this it should say it found the eid root key and do you want automatic conversion from kex to dex you want to say yes now if it doesn't find the eid root key then just go ahead and do the previous step again so go back to utilities go back to dump eid root key dump it it will restart, go back on here again, and now it should work. So we're going to go ahead and say yes to the automatic switch. And then there you go, that should be done. Then we can go up to swap LV2 kernel, and it will say it successfully changed to dex slash debug. And there you go. So that's going to also do another reboot. So when you log back in, you'll notice you'll now have this thing in the bottom right where it says connected from, host name, and it's got your IP address in there, which is handy because now you don't have to go into system information to find your IP address. It's right there, always there on screen on the XMB. Um, but if you want to double check, you can go into Rebug Toolbox. And then from there, you can go into System Information. And as you can see, LV2 kernel is now DEX, target type is now DEX. Now, you could just end it here and be like, okay, now I'm on a DEX uh, kernel, but the custom firmware we're running is really designed for a KEX um, kernel 
type and we're now on dex so it would be better for us to convert over and install a dex custom firmware now um, for better compatibility with you know the kernel type that we're now running on so that's what we're going to do to complete our transformation from uh, kex to dex so what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the computer and on the computer we're going to go to our usb stick so plug your usb stick back into your computer go back into ps3 update and remove the update from there and then grab the drex version of um rebug rex copy that in here and of course you can verify the hashes again in online md5 if you wish i'm just going to uh, take the risk here so go ahead and delete everything so it's just called ps3 update when you're ready and then you can unplug the USB, plug it back into the PS3. Okay, so on the PS3, what you're going to do, of course, is just do the update now. So go to System Update, Update via Storage Media. And, of course, it shows up here. So, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and select it. And it's going to start doing the update. Again, if you have any problems doing the update, just boot into safe mode by holding down the power button. Wait until it beeps twice. If it turns off... Just do it again, hold down the power button, wait for it to beep twice. That'll boot you into the safe mode options, and then option six is system update. So go in there and uh, do the update in safe mode if you're running into edit any errors when trying to do the update through the XMB right here. Normally for me, it works fine from the XMB, but some people have issues, so it's worth it to bear that in mind. And of course, you can convert back in the same way. If you want to go back to a Kex custom firmware, um, then, you know, go into Rebug Toolbox and basically just reverse what we did. Um, you just dump the root key again and then uh, rewrite the target ID flash and change the LV2 kernel back to uh, Kex and then you're good. You're back on Kex and then just install a normal Kex custom firmware and uh, you're back to the way you were. Okay, so now that we have a Dex firmware installed, we're almost done. There's just a few other things that we should change um, to make sure we're fully set up properly on DEX. So first thing I'm going to do is head back into the Rebug Toolbox. And now that we're on the Rebug Toolbox, as you can see, we're still on DEX. So if you head over to the selector, you can now change your system mode back to Rebug if it was selected before. And of course, you can also change the Debug menu to DEX so that we now have the proper debug settings for a DEX kernel type. So then we can just go ahead and quit. And that should actually reboot the console. Okay, so now that you've done the updates and we've got everything set up, so what we're going to do now is go down to the debug settings, which are now set to the developer debug settings, and make sure MP environment is set to MP, which it should be by default if you're on, you know, DREX, and then go down to the network settings. So there's network settings for debug, and it's set to dual settings by default. Again, you can customize this. So... What this basically means is when you're on DEX, you have kind of two different network setups um, when you're set to dual settings, which means that you can have a different IP address on your PS3 for all your debug stuff. So whenever you're connecting RTE tools, um, you can connect them to this you know, debug IP address, whereas all the other network stuff on the PS3, like connecting to PSN, um, or downloading updates and stuff like that will all be on the normal IP address. So you can set this up yourself if you wish. You just go to um, connection settings for debug and then set it to manual and then set an IP address that's different to the one that the normal network settings are using. Obviously make sure you select an IP address that's not being used by any other um, device on your local area network. And then you can just go through that and then you'll have a different IP address. It'll ask you to reboot in order to apply the changes, but then you'll have a separate IP address between your normal network settings and your debug network settings. Or you can just leave it on dual settings on automatic and it'll probably select the same IP address for both. Or you can, in, to ensure that they both use the same IP address if that's what you want, then you can select single settings and then that will make sure that it uses the same network settings for both, you know, normal PSN, normal connectivity, and the debug network settings will be both under the same network settings. So you can set that up in whichever way you choose. Now, the other problem that might pop up for you 
after converting to DEX is connecting to PSN. Um, so if I try and connect to PSN here, and this will only apply to a certain number of people, um, but if I log into my online account and then try and sign in, but as you can see, you're gonna run into this error. And this is an error that you're, you're just gonna keep running into. Every time you try and sign in, it's gonna give you this error. Now, again, this is only gonna to apply to a certain number of people. And the people that this does not apply to is people who are not using their default console IDs to sign into PSN. If your default console ID has been banned and you're now spoofing to a different console ID to connect to PSN, you're not gonna run into this issue. You're gonna be able to sign in just fine. But for everybody who uses their normal default console IDs um, because they're not banned yet, and you're using your default console ID from the console to sign into PSN, then you're gonna run into this error. So I'm gonna run PSN patch. You don't need to do this. I'm just doing this um, to illustrate something. So if we run PSN patch here, you can see my console ID is in the top left. Now, obviously I've blurred out the last few digits so that um, you know people can't steal the console ID and use it. So what you can see is you've got real and current. I'm not spoofing my console IDs right now. So these should be the same because the real console ID is the actual console ID from the console. And that is the console ID that I'm using to sign into PSN because it's not banned yet. So as you can see, uh, this number here is different. And that's what happens when you convert to DEX. They should be identical, but they're not. Um, so when you convert to DEX, this number changes. So seven becomes a two. Um, because it's, you know, it's a now a development kit console, so it changes one number in the ID for whatever reason. And that's why you can't sign in because it's not using the correct console ID. So what you need to do is basically spoof your console ID to your original console ID in order to sign in. Um, so you can do that in webman mod. So if I just press circle here to exit, I'm not going to spoof anything using PSM patch right now. So you just remember which number changed. So all we have to do is just spoof it. So if we go to Webman Games, um, make sure you have Webman Mod installed. I covered it in episode two. Uh, so, you know, check episode two to install it if you don't have it installed. We're gonna run the Webman setup. Again, you can also access the web page from your computer if you just enter the PS3's IP address in your web browser. And then we go to IDPS and MEM setup. Tick the three dots or the sunglasses icon and then just change this. Now you can see it's actually set to the correct ID, but because it's getting that from the actual console, but it's not actually spoofing to that ID right now. So all you have to do is tick the IDPS box and that will force it to use the original key that's in here. Um, and if the, if the ID is actually not the original key, then you can of course you know, just edit it and change it. And then once you're done, you just go ahead and click save. And then again, that will require another restart. So if we just go up here and restart the system. Okay, so now we can just go back onto our online profile. We should now be spoofed to the correct console ID. Also remember to spoof your firmware version to 4.85 or the latest firmware using Sen Enabler before you connect to PSN especially if you are on a lower firmware. Obviously, if the version of Rebug you're running is already on the latest firmware version, then you don't have to spoof it using Sen Enabler. But if you're on a lower firmware version, then go ahead and spoof it. I think when you're on DEX, you can actually just connect to PSN on a lower firmware version and it will allow you to connect. But obviously, you should spoof your firmware version to the latest version to avoid getting banned faster. So take the normal precautions when you sign into PSN if you you know, if you want to, then you can go ahead and do triangle and R2 at the same time to remove the um, system calls, custom firmware syscalls. And then you can do um, L3, R3 and R2 at the same time to unload webman mod. It's already spoofed the console ID, so you don't have to worry about it not being spoofed after you unload webman mod. And then we can just sign in, sign in. And there you go, we're now signed in on DEX. So yeah, now you're fully set up on DEX basically. You've got the, the debug settings correct for DEX. You're converted to a DEX kernel. You've got a DEX custom firmware installed. You're able to connect to PSN um, and you should be able to connect to RTE tools. You just gotta bear in mind about those dual network settings because it can throw some people off 
especially if it picks it, especially if you have, if you have it set to automatic and say it it selects a different IP address for the debug um, network settings to the normal network settings. And then you're trying to connect an RTE tool and it's not connecting because you're connecting to the wrong IP address. So you have to bear that in mind. So yeah, that's how you get set up on DEX. I will be doing a video showing you how to uh, take advantage of DEX by connect, being able to connect RTE tools to mod games remotely using things like GSC injectors remotely uh, for the Call of Duty games. But I think in the next episode, we're going to do Linux first. We're going to install a Linux operating system because I have been promising that video for a while. Um, so we're going to do that in the next episode. That will be episode 11. And then probably episode 12, we'll be connecting RTE tools on DEX and uh, modding games remotely and stuff like that on a DEX console. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.